Hi, today we're looking at the interior design welcome questionnaire, which is relatively a new thing still. And I know for those of you who have been uh, looking at interior design and obviously for the last few years doing a lot of research online, this can be really confusing because it just seems like the most natural thing to do. But interior design welcome questionnaires have never been part of the process of um, onboarding an interior design client in the past because um, interior design schools, if you go to interior design school, you'll notice that they don't even teach you about interior design welcome questionnaires. And that's because it's not part of what we call a traditional interior design process. So an interior design process is, or well, the traditional process is, for example, in the UK, you would be following the RIBA stages of work or what happens across the world, which the stages of a construction project are all the same. You always start with a design or a, a brief and then the concept, and then you go to detail design, technical design, construction and install, and then um, styling if that is part of what you do. So that traditional structure is what you're taught at schools. And that traditional structure is for larger projects. It's also for higher quality projects, which require bigger fees and um, obviously a, a, a bit, well, a full uh, scope of work. So if you're undertaking those types of projects, you're going to um, be undertaking the, the typical service that you would as an interior designer, which is what you've all been taught. And that makes sense that you wouldn't need a welcome questionnaire because uh, a welcome questionnaire isn't needed when you're doing full scope interior design work because you would have uh, room requirements schedules, you have a different type of onboarding process, it's very face-to-face, -face, um, and your fees reflect that, right? So where does the welcome question, <laughs> where does the welcome questionnaire come in? So this is quite a relatively new um, invention and I was starting to use it in around 2012 when I was figuring out how to do e-design and I realised that the process for interior design had to be different for online design or for smaller projects, which back then I was starting my business from scratch, I was still working um, in an architect's office and I was really trying to figure out a profitable way of working as an interior designer, even though I had years of experience. I couldn't show any of that work. So because of that, I had no portfolio, even though I was an experienced interior designer, and I was very capable of creating designs, but the process I had been taught was only for big projects, the projects I was working on in the architect's office. But the projects I was getting through the door as somebody without a portfolio, as somebody who had zero um, evidence to show that I was an experienced designer, um, were very different. I was getting very small projects like one room projects, um, you know, budget projects, uh, e-design projects that were starting to come out about because uh, back then e-design wasn't a thing and you know I was one of those people who was creating the process of e-design because um, it still didn't exist. And because of these systems, I had to create something. And uh, obviously there were other people doing this at the same time. And this is where the, uh, the welcome questionnaire kind of started to come about because welcome questionnaires became a process or part of this process for us to be able to navigate these smaller projects without having to do all of this upfront work one-on-one -on -one and filtering these clients. Uh, at the beginning of a project, which may have turned into a client or may not have turned into a client. So that's what we're going to look in today. You obviously needed a little bit of background about where Welcome Questionnaires came about because they're not something that have been around in the industry for too long. So in today's session, we're going to figure out everything you need to know about interior design welcome questionnaires. There's also a blog post associated with this. If you want a template, you've got a template. If you want a process um, to understand the process of how to use it, you've got that too. So um, just follow the link to the, to the uh, blog post. We call it um, interior design spotlight sessions. And in today's post, you'll have everything that you need if you want to use a welcome questionnaire. So now that we know how the welcome que questionnaire came about, what is it? <laughs> so a welcome questionnaire is a document that helps you get all the client details. It helps you to uh, start the briefing process 
So what we mean by that is starting the contract and starting to understand what it is that your client wants from you. Um, it's something that helps the onboarding process. So getting the client from uh, first contact into the process of your uh, workflow to become a, a, an actually paying client. So it helps that process uh, become more streamlined. And it also helps you to start to get your client to tell you what it is in their own words, what it is that they want. And that is really key because that is where uh, a lot of interior designers use this in the wrong way because uh, a lot of interior designers think, and this is not your fault because this is what happens when you've got the internet with loads of people trying to tell you and sell you loads of stuff, is uh, they think it's a marketing brochure. And it's not a marketing brochure. This is the biggest mistake that most people are making. An interior design welcome questionnaire is literally that. It's a questionnaire that helps you get all of the information about a project. So client contact details, all of the uh, people who are responsible, the address of the project, all of the actual details that you would usually get face to face. But if it's an e-design or an e-consultation, you're, like, you're not ever going to meet face to face. So this is... Um, kind of a vehicle that allows you to get all of that information efficiently, effectively, and without you having to do too much face-to-face -face time, which makes um, this process a little bit more cost-efficient for smaller projects, uh, rather than what you would, do, would be doing in a traditional um, process uh, for, uh, obviously, uh, a tra traditional um, kind of project. So, the interior design welcome questionnaire is not a marketing brochure because it's just trying to get all of the information from the client. Obviously, there is a place for a marketing brochure, um, but but it's not called a welcome questionnaire and you shouldn't be calling it a welcome questionnaire. So the welcome questionnaire is literally that. It's a questionnaire that helps you get all of the information from the client. It's not a marketing brochure that tries to sell the client on your services because by the time you've sent the welcome questionnaire to your client you've already got the job. So which type of projects require a welcome questionnaire? We've kind of covered this a little bit but obviously not traditional projects, not commercial projects, not luxury projects, not big projects. This is for fast, efficient, small uh, e-design, online design, really small projects. So these are the projects where the project value is under 100K, you're, and which is the majority of what most interior designers who are just starting out are getting. Most interior designers, and for those of you who want to know, aren't working on projects over a million. They're working on projects under 100,000. So one room, a client's got 50K to spend. That's still a lot of money for a lot of people. So there needs to be a process for us interior designers that help us provide an interior design service that is still very profitable for us but for a lot lower budgets. So for example, you're not going to be getting a 50k fee for a 50k project, <laughs> obviously, because um, unless you're the one um, supplying all of that furniture, but if you're just the designer and you're getting a separate design fee, I mean, think about it. If someone's got 50k to spend on furniture, how much do you think realistically they're going to be spending on a design fee? So you've got to start balancing up these things and realizing that if you are working on projects under 100K, that's usually my kind of benchmark, these are small projects and you need to make these projects as efficient as possible so that the client's getting the best value and you're getting the best value and you're actually running a profitable design business. So um, which... Which projects do uh, require this? It's literally only the small projects. And if you've got projects that are larger projects, commercial projects or um, projects with values over 100K, then you're using the traditional structure, right? So that's what you've been taught in design school or what you've been taught. Um, usually, like even if you Google it, you're going to find the, the standard interior design process, which is concept, detail design, uh, technical design, construction, um, ff &E install, and then um, uh, styling if you do that element of it. So that kind of interior design process 
is standard, but it's not standard for smaller projects. And obviously that's what I teach, so I'm not going to tell you at all. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I think it's really important to know that uh, the kinds of projects that you're going to be using a welcome questionnaire aren't the typical projects that you're seeing interior designers use uh, or create with their projects online because they're using a different system because their projects are just they're just much higher value projects than what you're likely to be doing. So what questions should you ask in your welcome questionnaire? This is a good question and if you want a whole um, template just go to the blog post and you can download that off our website so um, you have that easily. Um, to start with obviously the most obvious and the most critical is to get the client's details. I know it's obvious but I know when I was first starting out I forgot sometimes to ask for the client details so Sometimes, um, and it was coming to the point where I was actually still doing face-to-face -face consultations and I was preparing for my client um, uh, consultation and I'd have to embarrassingly text my client saying, uh, can I have the address please? <laughs> so it's obvious, but sometimes when you've got all this other stuff going on, you can miss it. So most obvious thing is get the client details, the address of the property, um, who's going to be living in the property and who is your point of contact because obviously when you've got multiple clients um, it's important to know um, who you're going to be emailing or um, calling depending on what your terms and conditions are. So contact details, pretty bare minimum. <laughs> uh, next you want to know about the project details, so who else is living in the property, how many kids, um, pets, sizes of spaces, all of the kind of project details that you would expect to want to know. So which rooms you're going to be doing, the kind of light that's in the rooms, all of the things that they don't like about these spaces and in their words, own words, trying to help your client or give them the kind of possibility to explain what it is that they're asking for in their own words, which is really, really important rather than being too prescriptive. Um, because I think that is uh, where interior designers start to get into a lot of trouble. So this is all the practical usage of the, of the space. So um, what is it that you actually need? Um, do they have any existing furniture that they need to use uh, and work around? Um, are they literally furnishing a brand new house? Do they want to start from scratch? Um, are there people with mobility issues? Any of the issues, like literally the practical stuff. So if you want to see all of those existing questions or those like an actual list of questions, just go down to the template. Next is the um, look and feel. And again, this is where most interior designers go wrong with their welcome questionnaire because they will literally be so prescriptive about this that it doesn't give the client a chance to actually give you their own words. And I keep emphasizing this because if you're putting the words into your client's mouth, you're not going to get what it is that they actually want. So this is why I feel it's more important to be open rather than try and show the intuitive like trying to show the client what it is that you know your point about this welcome questionnaire is to get their information not to tell them what it is that they want so it's this is why none of my clients ever out of hundreds and hundreds of clients that I've ever had working for my own business not for somebody else's never ever ever said that um I got uh, a project incorrect there was one, but that's one client who didn't fill in the welcome questionnaire. So the welcome questionnaire works, especially if you leave it open. And, um, you know, I see obviously because there are websites online who provide you with their own style and look kind of welcome questionnaires, which I personally feel are too prescriptive because interior design clients don't know what their style is and they don't know how to describe it accurately enough for you to take that information and actually provide an, um, an accurate response to. So I find the best result is to get your client to tell you what it is that they think they want, show you in pictures, tell you in words, describe it to the best ability. And then you as the interior designer, it's your job to translate that into what it is that they want. If you're being too prescriptive by saying, 
are you uh, a Scandi? Like, are you a bit of Scandi and a little bit of boho? Like, it's just too much. These people just want you to design their perfect space for them. And you're the professional, so you need to be guiding the process rather than asking your client to really like nail down what style they are before they've even started the project. It's too much. So the welcome questionnaire, especially when it comes to the look and feel aspect, needs to be like, leave it open. Like don't get too prescriptive. It's really, really important because I don't know, you know, it looks good. These lovely online um, uh, welcome questionnaires. And if you find that works for you, good for you. Um, I find it doesn't work in always 100% being foul proof on giving your client what it is that they want. And I'd love to know your feedback. If you do use these forms, how do you feel it works for you? If you're using the like online forms where it's like, oh, choose your style. Are you like Scandi or whatever <laughs> nonsense? Like if, it, if it's working for you, let me know below because I'd really love to have a conversation with someone who this is actually working for. And 100% of the time you've gotten your client's response as you nailed everything. So what's next? Um, contact details, project, um, look and feel, obviously then budget and timeline. So some clients aren't going to want to reveal their budget because they're afraid that you will spend it all. <laughs> and this is pretty natural because obviously interior designers do have a pretty bad reputation for spending everyone's money and then not actually telling the client what it is that they're doing, <laughs> which is rightfully so. If I was a client, I would want to know what my client was spending my money on. And funnily enough, I, I do follow a few of these um, like interior design communities online. And I mean, some of the stuff I've seen, and it's like the interior designers are in the wrong, but they think the client is in the wrong because obviously they're just taking advantage of the interior designer. It's like, no, actually, you need to understand from the client's perspective that um, they're worried that you're going to start spending their money. And if you're not communicating all of these things to your client, they're going to be worried. So in something as fantastic as a, and a useful document like the welcome questionnaire, it's really important to leave this question open, but also, also to suggest to your client that you're going to be using this to help them see if their project is realistic and to see um, how you can uh, prioritize the most important things in their budget, which is not as scary as what's, what do you want me to spend? <laughs> do you, uh, and because that's what, how they're going to read it. And then obviously a timeline because um, everyone seems to want everything yesterday, but obviously that's unrealistic, especially if you're using a welcome questionnaire, you're working on a low budget project. So you're not gonna move everyone aside. <laughs> for this one person who's pushing um, to have their project completed. It's like, no, there's a process. This is a budget project and we're doing it this way. And this is part of that process. So these are the typical questions um, kind of set into different, um, under different headings that you would put into your welcome questionnaire. And hopefully you can see why this is not a marketing brochure and how this starts to make sense about getting all the information that you need um, for your client, for, uh, like from your client about the project so that you can use this information to start designing. So how do you use a welcome questionnaire? Well, you use it as part of your onboarding process. So obviously on a tra traditional project, you would have um, kind of a first contact consultation and that would be part of your um, interior design onboarding process. Whereas for a small project, um, you're finding that obviously doing a face-to-face -face consultation is probably <coughs> very unrealistic because it's, um, it costs, a, well, it costs a lot of money. <laughs> and, um, sometimes I hear people, uh, trying to use the welcome questionnaire to price the project. No, um, you may, uh, this can be, I mean, <laughs> This could happen if you've kind of got the client wrong. So maybe you accidentally sent a high value client a welcome questionnaire because you thought the project was smaller than it is. Then in that case, yes, it would be used to help you price that project, but you would then kind of start the kind of more luxury project workflow rather than the e-design workflow. But that wouldn't be the typical process. 
because um, in order to use a welcome questionnaire, it's part of the low cost design kind of onboarding workflow. And so what is that kind of workflow? So, uh, because this is new, this is not something anyone else has told you about because uh, no one else really knows what they're doing. <laughs> um, I've obviously created a process and this is what I teach my um, students, but you can see in the blog post uh, a nice little workflow for you. But how, what does it look like? So obviously the client would contact you, that's pretty normal. That's the same as any other workflow. But then in a different, um, so obviously on a, on a bigger project you would go and price the project. You already know what you're offering uh, for a small project because um, it's uh, for small projects, it's really often about price. People aren't even going to um, call you unless they know the price because this is a small project. There's the mentality of a small project and they're not going to be like, well, we can afford them anyway. That's like 100K projects plus. Anything under 100K is a small project and the mentality of those people, the clients who purchase these projects, they want to know the price. So first contact, they already know how much things cost. They already know what they want. They already know the service because you've already created services that obviously appeal to these people because that is um, part of offering low cost services. Then you've got your T's and C's agreed. So that is the next part of the process. And this is when I usually send the welcome pack. So welcome pack obviously includes your welcome questionnaire and things uh, that uh, they need to start filling in. When you send that, you obviously send your invoice, which means that they would pay you before they book a consultation with you. And so all of this happens up front, then you would, well, you get paid, and then that's when they return the welcome questionnaire for you, which is in preparation for your consultation. So that you're prepared for that consultation, rather than using the welcome questionnaire and spending your time reading through somebody's 20 page document, when they're telling you all about their project that they can't afford. So they already know and you're already being paid to actually read it because this is part of your time for a low cost onboarding project um, and uh, it's part of an efficient process. They do the legwork, you get paid, you read up on it getting ready in time for your consultation. Then obviously after the consultation that is when you would start designing. So no designing beforehand, you don't use the welcome questionnaire to price the project, this is a low cost structure. This is where you're trying to make your onboarding workflow much more efficient because it's a small project and the fee is much much less than obviously a uh, 100k um, project where you know you could get uh, anywhere from, well depending on how you're uh, operating it, if you're doing full scope design on even a uh, 100k project you could get up to 30k depending on what it is that you're actually doing in that so but you can see uh, on most projects people would want to spend at least 90k on their project and as little as possible on the design phase um, and the management of that project and a few do's and don'ts so I always say do personalize it because that allows you to uh, just really make this on brand. Obviously, even if we're providing low cost services, we do want to have everything on brand and everything kind of working smoothly. Um, you do want to make it about your client, not about you. So this is not a marketing brochure. Um, the client has, in this case, already purchased the service from you. So we're not selling more at this point. We're making the client feel like the value that they've purchased that uh, something from us but the project now is about them they are now starting to enjoy the process of working with you um i would also limit the amount of questions try and get it down to under 20 because no one wants to be filling in a 100 page questionnaire this i mean it's too much 20 questions i find is a bit already like that's critical mass so if you can keep it under 20 uh, most people will be absolutely okay with that but um, I think mine started off around 23 and then I got it down to about 17 uh, towards the end and that was including obviously client, client contact details. Um, yeah so not too many questions, don't um, get too specific, uh, don't make it about you, you can introduce you as you know saying hi I'm really grateful that we're working together and let's now turn it back over to them make it personalized and uh, make it fun because you know this isn't 
you know, you're not working with discerning clients here. You're working with the typical person who is really excited to hire an interior designer. They've got a, you know, small to relatively small budget and they just really want your advice. They want your help. They're excited to have an interior designer on board and they want the process to be fun. So make it fun. So that's it. Hopefully you can see now how different uh, the kind of small project working and large traditional project process is and how the welcome questionnaire is a part of this smaller project process. This is why I can imagine it's very confusing for most people who have only ever, well it was confusing for me at the beginning because obviously I was also somebody who had, by the time I had started my own business, um, I had already been working as an interior designer for 15 years. So I had a lot of experience working on high-end projects. I, I had done traditional upon traditional pro, pro, upon traditional kind of process. So when I was getting small projects and I was trying to use this traditional structure on small projects, it wasn't working. And this is why most interior designers that you see are frustrated. They're getting, they're not making any money because they're giving everything in the same way that they would be giving a traditional structure for a percent of like it's so much less fee so you have to find a way to work differently to a traditional structure and obviously that's what I teach in my mentorship so for those of you who are just starting out think about this uh, working in a different way to what you've been taught and it's this welcome questionnaire is a workflow is part of this process that makes working with smaller projects more efficiently rather than trying to fit this into a traditional interior design structure it just it's weird <laughs> so don't do it like um there is already a traditional interior design project structure that works concept detail design traditional design you like to, uh, technical design construction install that is a traditional structure that's been tried and tested we use it in architecture we use it in interior design contractors use it it's the same worldwide <laughs> um it's that is how to run a project but small projects are different because you don't ever or usually don't go through that whole process um, and it varies. So to make it profitable, we have these new systems coming into play that people like me have invented, other people too, who have been working on um, creating these systems for the last 10, 12 years now. So this is new. It's, it's if you were trying to search a welcome questionnaire for interior design, even 10 years ago, there wouldn't have been anything like it around. So this is a new thing. Um, it has been a bit confused because obviously people didn't know what it was. Um, uh, at least now you know what it is, how to use it, what it's used for, what kind of projects it isn't used for, and how you can use it efficiently for your own business. So have a look at the blog post, download the template, use the workflow, um, and you've got everything there that you need. So I wish you all the best. I'm Jo Crowback. I'm an architectural and interior designer, and I run the Interior Designers Business School here in London. And it's for people who are trying to change careers into interior design, as well as those designers who have been in business, but are really struggling to get their businesses off the ground. So if you're all in the first few years of business, uh, have a look at our mentorship.